Welcome to the show. As always, super excited and honored to be here with you guys today. And we're excited to continue in our community builder series. And I have a special guest with me um, today, Inbal Claudio. This woman is not only beautiful on the outside, but she is so genuine. And I can just tell, like we just immediately connected. So I'm actually I'm really excited that you're here and that we are going to get to just expand on this conversation of community. So Inbal, thank you so much for being here and for your time and sharing what you are so passionate about when it comes to community. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to chat about this. I feel like anytime I get into a space where I can talk to somebody else who's building community, we could just talk for hours. So (laughs) I'm really excited about where this conversation is going to go and all the value that we can provide. So thank you so much. I'm honored. For sure. I know this might be like a three hour episode, so you just never know. <laughs> never know. <laughs> not really. Not really. We got stuff to do, but we do. I'm like, we have babies to take care of. We have kids. We have, we have like, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Well, um, Inval, she is a mom of three. She's a wife and a three-time entrepreneur that currently lives in Southern California. As a candle maker turned tech founder, Inval's passion for empowering women entrepreneurs had let, has led her to create the Like-Minded Collective, which is a social media platform for dreamers, creators, and female founders. Her mission is to make sure that every single female founder founder, no matter what stage of business they're in, knows how incredible they are and has the support that they need. So I'm excited to expand on this. So share a little bit about where this kind of stemmed from, because if there's anything that I've learned, at least in my journey, is that we typically start these things not for the most part, like as heart-centered entrepreneurs, it's not necessarily because we see this big gap in the market compared to, oh man, like I'm actually really craving this. So, and maybe, maybe there is, maybe it was like the gap in the market. You're like, heck yeah, I'm going to take up this space because I rock at it and I'm going to do it. And that's okay too. Like, <laughs> but I would love to actually hear just a little bit of the background of how this all started and what dove you into the like-minded collective. Cause like candle maker turned tech founder, like, yeah, that's not a, that's not they like, are not the same, <laughs> right? not even in the same industry. Yeah, nothing. Um, there's nothing about being a candle maker that translates into tech founder, um, which I've had to learn the hard way, but essentially that's, that's what it was. My second business, like you said, I'm a three-time entrepreneur. My first company was a real estate brokerage firm and my second company was a candle company and I was doing great. I had built this amazing community from like the time I was 12 years old. I launched my candle company. I was doing in-person events. It was amazing. And then we moved to the East Coast and I had to rebuild completely. I started doing farmer's markets and trade shows. I got into a lot of retail stores and it was great. And then my first daughter was born. And that's kind of where it halted for me because I had built such this amazing in-person relationship with people that I didn't really know how to translate it to the online space. And for me, it was like, okay, well, I have to get into influencer marketing. And all these platforms were charging $500. All these business coaches wanted me to join their mastermind, to buy their course. Like I felt like I was basically looked at as a dollar sign and I didn't have the funds to spend and I didn't have the entrepreneur friends to lean on to. Um, So I basically just realized there's a space for me to create a platform where it's free with free resources, free education, and we really put friendship first and business second. So that's kind of where the idea for Like Minded Collective came about. I did not know it was going to take so long to launch and cost so much money because like I said, I was not, I didn't have a technical background. Um, I thought it was like, yeah, you know, like a couple thousand dollars in three months, like I will launch this thing. But it took me about two and a half years, four developers, eight different launch delays. But I'm so happy that I actually went through it because 
the relationships that I have built personally, the relationships that I see cultivating on the platform and in our events every single day is what it's all about. So that's kind of how I made the transition. But yeah, it was definitely a pain point. And I always tell people, I'm like, I selfishly created this for me. Like I needed this and it's fulfilled everything I've ever dreamt about. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the transition from candle maker to tech founder. I love that. Well, what I love that it has stuck with the theme for you. I like to, uh, in the most loving way, like call uh, you and I, like people like you and I, women, I, and I, women like you and I, the gatherers, <laughs> right? Like we like love to gather the people. Like I know for me, it's always has been this. I used to be in different industries as well. And I just always noticed there was just a theme and a pattern of always gathering people together and always helping create community and always helping to cultivate connection. And it was like, and there's this saying that one of my favorite mentors, his name is Graham Cook. And he says that what you do with it, uh, when you do with intention, what you have done by intuition, you achieve acceleration. I love that. Right. It's so true. I like was thinking about this the other day because my birthday parties growing up, There were always like my Jewish friends, my work friends, my gym friends, my lifelong friends, like, and everybody always came and left with a new friend. Like I was like, meet this person, meet this person. Like it was always just something that came natural for me. And my husband and I moved to North Carolina for four years and I would come back to visit and I would always bring everybody back together. They're like, Imbal, whenever you're coming, like we have 12 girlfriends at a dinner table <laughs> and then you leave and it's like, we have little groups of people here and there. But I totally agree with that because for me, creating community is so easy. I just like make people feel like they matter, right? Like I love them and they're willing to show up. Um, and so I love what you said because it's so true for me. It's just the second nature to create community. And it just happened. And I'm like, wow, this is really beneficial (laughs) for my business, you know? Um, and now it's about teaching other people how to do that too. Yes. I love that. I want to go back to what you said about how creating this community has actually in turn and selfishly, like in the best way, right. Has actually fulfilled, like the needs that you had. So Mm -hmm. I'd love to actually talk about how community does that. Cause I think that for us as people that we can be really hurt in community. Like we know what it looks like to be in community and when it gets messy and when it gets hard and we can be really healed in community. Right. And so But because we are actually, we're made for community, we're not meant to do life, to do business, to do motherhood, to do any of this stuff alone. What do you feel like those needs um, that you saw fulfilled when you got plugged into community? And then let's expand that now into the needs that you're seeing being met by the women that are in your community. Yeah. So I'll give you a perfect story. And this is like all encompassing. So I, when I first launched, I started to do workshops once a month and I was connecting with people and I connected with this girl who I'm sure maybe you and a lot of your listeners know Haley Westfall in Arizona. She is the founder of collab and I connected with her and I'm like, this girl's awesome. We just vibe and we're friends now. I did the same thing with this other girl named Kelsey. She also does in-person events. She's in Seattle and we clicked initially or like instantly. Those two girls showed up to a networking event with like-minded collective. They instantly clicked. And one of them had met another girl, Brie, who also does in-person events and coaching. So all of us do the same kind of thing. And we were in a Voxer chat group together for about like a year. And then we're like, let's just do a mini mastermind. So they all flew here. We got an Airbnb in Newport beach and we spent three days doing photo shoots in-person events for like-minded OC. We did virtual events for like-minded collective. And we spent about three hours in each other's businesses, brainstorming and helping all this happened three days after this massacre in Israel happened, which is where my family's from, where I was born. And I'm like, I needed them so badly on so many different levels that 
for me, it filled everything that I needed. It took my mind off of something so horrific for three days while I was with them. And I was able to focus on my business. I was able to feel that love and support from women. And I was able to pour into them as well. So that's personal. That's business. It like really, the fact that I put myself out there and connected with people and with the right people just in turn brought so much value to me that, I mean, they're lifelong friends now, you know, the four of us are just connected forever. Um, and that is the value of community, you know, even as a mom, like I have three little ones, I have a four and a two-year-old, they're girls and then a seven month old baby. And as an entrepreneur and a mom, there's not a lot of people that can understand what you're going through. So finding a community of women like that has been super beneficial. Um, Just being able to hop into Zooms with people and just kind of like vent for 10% of the time and just like feel that feel with other people and then talk about business the other 90%, you know, that's been really beneficial for me. Um, and I know other women too. And then also finding just community that allows you to be that mom with like babies in the background, if you need to, or like nursing on the calls. Um, so it's just so incredibly beneficial in general. And for me personally, I've had so many experiences with women. Like I said, the, the mini mastermind that I did with the three women, um, has been like life-changing. It was so amazing. I love that. That's so good. And I love what we're like sharing about how community is done so well that when there are those hard times that it's like, oh man, like we can come together and and we're meant to like do like even do the hard stuff together. I think that so many times that we can, especially in the online space, that it can look perfect and everything is amazing. And now all of a sudden we lose that element of being real and being human. And I'm such a big proponent of, gosh, like, yes, like show up in your too much and exactly who you were made to be like that is fully allowed, like be fully expressed in your big ideas and dreams and passions and hopes and dreams. And guess what? Like I'm right there with you. I've got a 10 month old. She was turned 10 months old yesterday and like had breast milk all over. So I'd like change my shirt right before this recording. And it's like, this is like real life too. Like, man, like we get to meet in the messy middle in the highs and the lows and the good times and the, and the, and the hard times. And even just what you went through, like what culturally and, and how beautiful that they were there for you in that space and to be able to provide that safe space as well as, okay, like let's work on your hopes and dreams and how can we come together and help? There's this visual um, that I love that if we are, like if you can imagine as you're listening to the podcast, your hands are like in your fingers all are all like touching and together, right? Like if we are like, there's, if there's no gaps, if we are just perfect all the time and like have it all put together. Um, now imagine that I'm like spreading my fingers and there's gaps, but that actually creates the space. Mm -hmm. to. I love that. And so we actually want to share our gaps and we want to share the hard times, um, and invite people into that space. Um, And I'll also say this, it, not everyone also is meant for that space, (laughs) right? Which is where there can be levels of community as far as levels of access. So what have you seen as a community builder, um, what it looks like to allow people to see into your life, which is what I like to call transparency compared to proximity, compared to access, compared to, I know that there are sometimes that people, even for myself, when I was doing uh, influencer marketing, it was like a lot of people thought that they just had automatic access to everything that I was about or could do or could wear or, you know, and it was all of a sudden, not everyone like gets access. And that's actually, there's healthy boundaries with that and health, healthy emotional boundaries. So I'd actually love for you to share a little bit about your journey as a community builder and what that has looked like for you to allow 
yes, like large access to a lot of people as well as protecting and having healthy boundaries for the things that matter most to you? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I think in the beginning, I've always been an open book. Yeah. So for me, the biggest thing that I wanted women to feel was welcome. And that kind of like what you said, like the gaps, right? Because ultimately that's how you get women to just love you and your community is by showcasing those gaps and allowing them to have those gaps to be vulnerable. However, that also comes with like this false sense of like, that they know you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And which is great, but my job as a community builder is not to get people to me, right? It's to have those feelings to one another. So what I really try to do, because I'm a very emotional person. So it's like natural for me to just be like, oh, let me hop on a zoom with you. Let me help you. And I needed to really teach myself how to kind of keep people a bit at arm's length and really only let a few people in and the rest I can lean towards each other. So that's what I've really had to work on. Like you have this problem and this person's in a really similar boat. Let me connect you guys. And hopefully there can be a friendship made or even just like a source of comfort. Um, but it's, it's not natural for me. So it's really had to be something that I've worked on and everybody knows, you know, community is free. Community is a free arm of your business. And so a lot of people can take advantage of that sometimes where I give so much, but I also charge for things. You know, I am a community building consultant. I help women build out communities. So I'm willing to voice know a few things and answer some questions and provide value. But if it's like constant, I have to kind of be like, Hey, listen, like this is, I'd love to help you. Let's hop on a zoom. Like here are the options that I have for you. But it's like learning how to do that where it's like, I don't want to hurt their feelings or I just want to give, you know? So I think it's definitely something that I'm going to go back to the three women that Haley, Kelsey, and Brie have taught me, like, you need to you know, have people that respect your time and you need to really set boundaries. And it goes back to having these women, because if I didn't have somebody who I can be like, Hey, like this person did this and this didn't make me feel good. And they're like, put your foot down, you know, like somebody who's like, hello, (laughs) yelling at you. Um, and I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're totally right. So I think learning how to do that and talking to other women who have communities who know what it's like to be community builders and set those boundaries because, And I'm sure you can relate to this. Everybody wants to have a coffee chat and everybody wants to connect with you. And as much as I would love to do that, there's certain points in my life that I just can't. Um, Like when I was two months before having a baby and I'm like, I don't, I, this is like me, myself and I, I don't have a VA. I don't have an assistant. Like, so I told them like, I am not taking connection calls right now. I am, am really focusing on getting myself prepared for maternity leave. And like this, went on for like three, four months postpartum too. And I put my foot down. Um, so my word of the year was selfish. Like I am being selfish. So it's really changing my mindset around. I want to be available. I want to provide, I want to connect with women, but it also has to make sense for me in the long run. And I have a free community and I have free networking events. So like, I would love to connect with you there, (laughs) you know? So setting those boundaries, knowing you know, how to do that and realizing like my time is my most important asset for me. Um, because if I feel drained that I'm not there for my family and that's what it really boils down to. Yes. No, I love that. So what would you say? And I know I have definitely experienced this too, is that when people misunderstand those boundaries or even the level of connection that's there. Cause like what you were saying, it's like, yes, like being open and vulnerable and sharing those gaps and knowing that community is absolutely like, um, that we're meant to be the gap insurance and we're meant to like help each other fill those gaps and for that connection. And as a leader, it can also look like people think that they have a deeper connection, which they might with that community builder and that leader. And also 
it takes an emotional, like there's an, a, a relational awareness level of saying, oh, that's actually is not reciprocated. So one of the things um, that I've, I've learned is that a, that connection can only go to the level of the, like, if someone is like, oh, like, I think that they're an intimate friend compared to someone who's like, oh, well, actually, I just think that you're like a friend. Like the, le- the level of connection can only go to that lowest, like to the friend level, unless there is the mutual traveling up the levels of friendship or traveling up the levels of connection or, you know, like almost like into the levels of an inner circle. Mm-hmm. Um, and that only happens with both people. So what would you say as far as like, cause my big heart is like healthy community, right? Like I'm really in it to create big people. Like, I don't want like it, like it's not it's not the charity show. Like what you're saying, like, this is about the community. This is about the women connecting and having connection with each other. And I'm also in it to build big people. Like I could care less if I have a big audience, I could care less if I have a big, like following whatever it is. Like I want big people. And what that looks like is that we get to show up fully and authentically with the gaps that we have. Um, and so that emotional health and that relational health really matters to me in our communities. And I can totally tell it does to you. So what does it look like for you when there are those people who maybe misunderstand the connection or the levels of connection? Um, and what have you done to encourage those people? Um, or to like, I don't know, maybe they just leave and they, (laughs) like, which is a bummer, but like, like what's, what's been your experience with sometimes the misunderstanding of what can happen with a leader and a community builder and someone in the community? Yeah. I've had this a lot in the beginning, um, because I was really trying to create those deeper connections with the early people who were in my community. And to the point where I, would get on like free zooms with people like, Oh, let me, and this is, this happened one time, this girl, and I just felt bad for her, you know? And this is where my emotions came in. I'm like, Oh, like I just feel bad. And she had a question about emailing. And so I got on a zoom with her at like nine o'clock at night, shared my screen, showed her how to go through like mailer light and how to automate something. And she didn't take action. Yeah. And for me, it was almost like a reality check, you know, because I took my time at night, which is valuable for me because I wasn't really sleeping much at that point (laughs) to, yeah, to spend time showing somebody how to do something. And they didn't even implement like that was the last straw. And she reached out to me a couple of months later and she was like, Hey, I have some ideas. I'd like to like brainstorm with you. Can you hop on a zoom? And I, this is when I put my foot down. I was like, you know what? Um, I don't have time to do that. However, if you want to voice note me, um, or send me an email, then uh, I'd be happy to give you my thoughts. And she didn't do either. So for me, that was like, I'm giving her options that feel good for me. And uh, she can take that however she wants. Um, There's been other times where people have sent me information like, hey, can you review this? Hey, can you do that? And I just tell them like, hey, I'm so sorry right now. I'm at full capacity with my time. And I'm unable to do that, but maybe post about it in like-minded collective and see if somebody is willing to do a trade with you. You know, maybe they need something else to review. So I try to always offer a solution within the community that would be beneficial. And the whole point is you're in a community, utilize the community, utilize the people who are in there because there's people who are on the same level. And that's why we've implemented different fields in your profile. Like, where are you at? What is your revenue? What stage of business are you in? So you can connect with people who are exactly in your shoes. Um, And so I kind of refer people back to that. Um, But I, like I said, I've learned how to say no, and I've learned how to stand my ground. And for me, being selfish is really... I don't take it as a negative, you know, I'm protecting my time. And what I also have done is I've implemented ambassadors and affiliates. So these are women who love like-minded collective. They've been there from the beginning, or if they're even new, they're just obsessed. And I point people to them because it's a win for them. If they can help somebody out and they have a coaching business or a copywriting service or 
anything like that, a web design, web copy, I'm able to send people their way so that they can help them and hopefully get a new client. Um, So it's a lot of facilitating. It's a lot of matchmaking um, (laughs) away from me into somebody (laughs) else's hands. (laughs) But it's hard. I'm not, I'm not kidding. It it was really difficult for me in the beginning to do that. Um, Cause like I said, that's not what comes natural to me, but I felt good after doing that a few times and realizing like this saves me time. You know, it opens up time for me to work on my business, to bring more people into the community, to help more people inside the community. And Now I've implemented like one-on-one strategy calls and coaching and, you know, things that I can tell people like, Hey, I would love to work with you. Here are the options that you have. Um, so that also made me realize like, I need to expand my business because people want my help and I want to help them, but I do need to charge for my time. Totally. Totally. Last question as a community builder, where do you see the future of community going? I honestly say this with full confidence. Community is the solution to every problem you have in business. Every single problem, you can find an answer in community. So I don't see it going anywhere. I see it growing exponentially. The problem is, is I think there's a lot of people who are going to build community incorrectly and then lose it. Um, so I think for whoever wants to build community, find somebody who has done it, who is good at it and get some guidance because people think community is an audience. People think community is a membership. People think community is their Instagram. People think they have to have a place to house their community. Um, you don't need any of that. (laughs) You know, you can build a sense of community with literally nothing. All you need is like a phone number or an email or meeting people in person. Um, you don't need community for, you don't need a platform or anything like that to build community. It's just a sense of like bringing people together, making them feel like they matter and helping them in some way, whether that be personal or business. Um, so I don't see it going anywhere. Like I said, I see it growing. I see a lot failing, unfortunately, but I see it really being the answer to everything. I love that. And I am c- couldn't agree with you more. And like anything, there'll be people that do it messy and they'll learn <laughs> how to do it more right the next time. And um, so, yes, look for, I would even venture to say, look for those that are creating healthy community. <laughs> Right. Not just community, not just an audience, because there is like what you're saying, there's a difference between creating a community and an audience. Um, We actually just had our our summit and it was really interesting. We had multiple people come up to us and they were sharing how they really appreciated our focus on community because literally the week before there was another event in our local area and the, it was more of like the audience guru type of connection. And they, it was like all about them and all about the guru at the front of the room, which that's fine. If that's what you're creating, like go for it. Um, but half the women actually ended up leaving because it was just, they said it felt like just not super awesome and they just love that the connection like that they could feel the heart and like the like our heart for healthy community and for healthy connection and just really building women up like mind body soul business you know spirit everything like that we're just really invested in um in all of them um and them together And so it was just this beautiful reminder of, yes, like get in community, but get in healthy community because you're going to see a big difference in, in those things. So, yeah, I always tell people like when I first start working with them, create two lists, a list of things that you love in communities that you're a part of and things that you don't like in communities that you're a part of. And then build your community based on that, you know? Um, because for me, what it was is I hated 
that some people didn't allow people to talk on Zooms, that it was recorded or a workshop without like the ability to ask questions or even like talk about your business. So now I implement that fully. Everyone always introduces themselves and networks on every single call, whether it's a networking call or a workshop or a brainstorm, whatever it is. So for me, that was the one thing like female founders need the mic. And so that was one thing. So I would definitely suggest things you like, things you dislike, a healthy community should be on things that you like and you want. (laughs) Um, So I fully agree with you on that, but that's, you know, the only way to do that is to really focus on um, your past experiences and people who you want in your community, ask them what they like and dislike, build it around that. Yeah. So good. I love it. Well, Inval, thank you so much for your time. I know people are going to want to find you and follow you and even join your community and get plugged in. So share all the socials, all the fun things, um, what you have available, um, so they can dive into your world and start to connect with you. Yeah. So my social is at inball Claudio. Um, and I have everything there. I do in-person events in orange County. I have a free virtual community with free community and networking. Um, I have a membership with more hands-on approach to business with coaching and brainstorming. And then I also do consulting and coaching one-on-one. So everything is on at inball Claudio. My website's there, like my collective Instagram is there. So you can find everything through my personal Insta. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, for sharing your expertise in community and community building and what it looks like. Um, There's this quote and I'm on a mission and I know I'm sure that you are too, but there's a quote that says, if ever there's a time that the women of the world come together, it will be a force that the world has never known. And I am actually, I believe that that time is now, like it's not an if ever anymore, like at the beginning of that quote, um, I believe that time is now and I'm on a mission to see that happen. And I know that you are too. So Thank you for building an incredible community, for being a gatherer, um, and uh, you're just doing some amazing things. And I, I even just see, um, even in this next season, um, that it is going to be a season of even greater flourishing for you, um, that even greater growth for you, right? Because I think that um, we can, like, if a flower is, if a flower isn't blooming, like you don't fix the flower, you fix the environment. Mm -hmm. Right. And I feel like you have created such a beautiful environment for women to flourish. And because of that greenhouse that you've created, that it's just going to um, exponentially grow you as well. So I just see that for you. I love that. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. (laughs) Like I needed that today. So thank you. Good. Good. Us moms, we need those things, right? (laughs) We do. We do. We do. (laughs) I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. You guys make sure to dive in, um, find her on Instagram, dive into all the things. I'll make sure to put everything in the show notes, but thanks again involved for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for listening to the show. I hope it brought some value and some fun into your business and life. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast and even share the episode with a fellow business bestie who you know will love it. It helps us continue to attract top level guests and reach more and more women who are on their journey in business just like you. Remember that when money gets in the hands of good women, great things happen. Cheers to your success.